Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. I did a video a few years ago called Kill the Mic Noise, and I identified some different things that were causing issues in terms of the noise floor and noise that was being introduced into my vocal mic recordings by different equipment or my room or the preamp. And a lot of the problem is you don't know how to identify and then isolate the cause of it. So we're gonna talk about how to first measure the noise floor in your room with your mic and your setup, which is gonna be very unique, but we need to know how much you're dealing with to begin with. And then we're gonna talk about how to isolate that and figure out what the source is so that we can then fix it and get cleaner, quiet recordings. So I've got Logic set up here and we have an audio track with the input for my microphone. And then we're just monitoring that. And I have the multimeter which is measuring a uh, peak reading and an RMS reading just so we can get a relative feel for the measurement of our noise floor. Now I'm gonna throw on my headphones and what you're gonna notice right now when I'm not speaking is silence or nothing because I'm utilizing a noise gate on the way in through my RME uh, Total Mix UFX here. So you'll see that activated as I get quiet it suppresses any of the signal. I'm also pretty lucky today. I haven't heard a plane. Your room may have some noise. There's a plane flying overhead right now that you can probably hear. So what I'm gonna do is bring that back and effectively turn the noise gate off. And now when I go back and I'm not speaking, you're gonna hear a few different things. One, you're gonna hear any self noise from your microphone. So some mics are louder than others. In addition to that, we're also hearing the preamp gain. So I'm using the Aphex channel, and as of right now, that bit of white noise is actually coming mostly from the preamp itself. There's just some natural analog noise that happens in a preamp. It's perfectly normal. Don't worry about that. We wanna hear the mic, the preamp, and just our audio signal chain as a whole. So to do that, if you're using a condenser mic or a microphone that requires phantom power, we're gonna turn that 48 volt phantom power off. If you're using a dynamic mic, we wanna turn the gain all the way down on that mic. And then I'm also going to turn the output of my preamp down as well, just so we can hear how much of that noise is coming in fact from anything else in the chain. So if you start doing these measurements like I just did, you know, what's an acceptable noise floor measurement? I would try to keep this below minus 60 dBFS. You know, that's gonna give you quite a clean result. All right, so now that we've identified a measurement in terms of what our actual noise floor is in our recordings, we need to identify where the noise is coming from outside of the obvious. After isolating my audio gear, which means just you know unplugging everything one by one, leaving only one unit plugged in at a time, with your preamp and your mic, you can start to you know figure out what the mic noise of each component is. I was able to identify a hum that was being produced by the power conditioner itself. Big surprise, right? None of this stuff is hooked up to a traditional studio power conditioner like many of you might. And this solved two problems that I think a lot of you out there are dealing with. Putting all of your audio equipment, including your interface, you know, your preamp, any analog gear you have, your studio monitors, put that all on the same power strip, right? Then everything else that's not related, meaning things like your laptop AC adapter. You know, I have an AC adapter for my camera that uh, just recently I had accidentally plugged that camera AC adapter into the power strip that I'm using for my audio gear. Guess what? I started to have this weird like whizzing whirling kind of noise in my audio signal and as soon as i unplugged that camera ac adapter and plugged it into you know the other adapter that i use for everything else it went away so i have two of these identical Furman ss6bs i'll put a link in the description if you want to check them out 
They're nothing special, but they're quiet. They don't produce any hum whatsoever, which is much more important to me than having the convenience of turning everything on and off with, you know, just a single switch. There's gonna be some equipment in your studio that just produces a hum based on the power supply or the transformer internally. Again, I have a keyboard that uh, has always produced a bit of a hum. And so I use what's called a hum X. I showed this in my previous video. I can plug that keyboard directly into the hum X. The hum goes away immediately. This does not work in every situation. For instance, I had a left studio monitor that was producing a noticeable hum that would be in my signal chain just because I was recording, you know, close right here at the computer and it drove me crazy. So maybe some of you out there are dealing with that and hooking that into the hum X did not fix it. So what I actually had to do with that is I found a local audio repair specialist. Hopefully you're not gonna deal with something like this, but he actually had to modify the physical speaker itself to move the mid frequency driver away from the crossover because that was producing some hum and some interference. I paid, you know, 40, 50 bucks to have that modification done. And it makes a huge difference in terms of the uh, quiet recording that I can get right here at my computer. Another thing that creates a ton of mic noise problems in your vocals that a lot of people overlook is not only the cables that you're using. So make sure to use balanced cables for sure. Secondly, you'd be amazed at how cable management can actually help reduce noise and give you cleaner recordings. If the mic cable is running over, you know, maybe another power cable that might not be shielded as well, and it's just physically touching that, I can notice that that will produce some buzz, some humming, and just pulling that away or having a, a cleaner cable management behind the desk has actually uh, eliminated a lot of noise issues that I had. So take a look, get a little bit more organized with your cabling. And you're going to notice that just again, not by having a lot of those physically touching using cable ties, not only for just organization, but to help with, you know, not having those uh, cables interfere with one another. Great way to utilize them. I hope we've shed some light on some more unconventional sources that may be causing your noise floor headaches, but that you just haven't considered. I know I've found myself there and you got to stay curious and realize that noise floor and any issues it's going to be something that's constantly evolving for you and you're going to need to reevaluate this. You know, my first video on the topic, I was dealing with a lot of different issues at that point. I was in a different room. I had different gear, had a different level of experience. So, you know, anytime you add a new piece of equipment, you change a cable, you rearrange something in your room, it can start to pile up and then it becomes very difficult to distinguish and isolate what are actually causing your noise floor issues. If you have anything to add to this, a method or approach that you think might be helpful for those trying to reduce the level of noise in their recordings, please leave that below in the comments. If you learn anything in the video, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. Hit that notification bell for more. We'll talk to you soon.